We're live on Facebook. Hello, Facebook friends. I'm Love Coach Scott Thomas, and look who's here. We get to spend Sunday morning with Pollyanna Bush, uh, one of our absolute favorite muses and minstresses. And I just made that word up, actually, a minstress. Um, is that a word? Do people have to do that? Works for me. I'm a <laughs> minstrel mistress. Got so, it. <laughs> You know, if you're watching this, you've probably seen Pollyanna on Saturday Night Alive. And uh, I'm so grateful that I get to spend my morning with you. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. It's such a pleasure to be here. And, and Pollyanna, we're going to be talking a lot about voice. She's clearly, obviously, very empowered. You know, she's an empowered singer. And she's teaching other people how to do that. In fact, Deborah Juicy is going to take her course. Um, as well as many other wise souls. So we're going to, you know, talk about that. But I think what I'm going to do, because I need to share this out on Facebook. So I'm going to put the spotlight on Pollyanna and ask you if you would mind taking us into a presencing. Yeah. That's beautiful. Ah, good morning, everybody. It's so wonderful to be here with you. Thank you for being present with me and uh, what I'd like to do right now is to invite you to clear your lap, just take you know, sit up, it will lengthen your spine and find a way to breathe fully. So let's take a breath together. <sighs> and exhale. <sighs> feel free to make a sound. Here we go. Inhale, and if you feel move to, I invite you to put your hands right on the lower ribs. Feel your ribs expand. And exhale fully. Just really feel your body breathing. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale deeply. that heart center. Feel free to place your hand over your heart. Exhale fully. Inhale fully. about my voice and now I get to be curious about it and 
notice what simply how me notice the effect that it has on your whole body into yourself and slather it all over your beautiful body. Ah, take it all the way down to your feet. Oh, yum, 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 yum. <laughs> and thank you for joining me. Wow. 
do I really have to unmute and come on? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, what a beautiful, beautiful journey. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah look at me oh my gosh wow yeah thank you by the way that was not rehearsed like just before i was like are you seeing i don't know i wasn't planning on it well like, let's do something it was all spontaneous that's amazing and so i guess there there it is let's start there it's spontaneous share with with us your process of being such a clear channel for spirit to flow through, you know, finding that balance of your human self, the ego, the part of you that wants to perform and be heard and all of that, um, which is beautiful. And also the part of you that, you know, has learned how to let spirit flow through. Talk to me about that. Oh, you know, that all started really, really early for me. Uh, my mom had been a singer, a professional singer, and she sang, I know she sang all the way through her pregnancy and she taught us kids, uh, was the youngest of five. She taught us to sing in harmony. And we sang around the campfire. And that was my first circle singing experience. And I, I felt a sense of connectedness and harmony. I didn't have words for it. I just knew that Oh my godness, or my godness. Yeah, that's great. Oh my godness. Um, there's so much connection here. There's so much a sense of belonging. And it wasn't about performing. In that moment, it was simply about connection, mm -hmm. and meaning and depth and belonging. And I know there are so many cultures, there's still some cultures that know that singing together is a fabric. It's, it's a wonderful, beautiful way of staying connected with each other and harmonizing with each other. So that was my start, you know, and then my first choir when I was five, church choir, uh, we were called the cherubs. <laughs> and I, I somehow connected and I knew the meaning of it. I was connected with angels. I felt that angelic presence. And as a cherub, I, I really took that role quite seriously. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a little five-year-old and singing in the church, it wasn't about religion. You know, when you're five, it's just about awe. Yeah. You're just open. So I was open and I went in a choir singing in harmony and feeling these voices around me and these tall ceilings, you know, the tall, big ceilings and the arch stained glass windows, there was just magic. And I felt that I had a role. Again, I didn't have the words. I just knew there was a directive, something that had to come from this voice and that it was important. It was an important role. So that's where it started for me. You know, and then, of course, like you're saying, you know, as you grow older and you get bumped here and there and then you forget who you are, you know, um, there were ways that I wanted to get approval and so forth and be seen. And, and again, that's all quite natural and, and, and the journey that we go through. And it's important, right? It's an important part of development. And then some of it feels really horrible, you know, where I lost touch with my beauty and my um my gift for the gift for the giving so then you know i, I think of it as a, an amazing love story you know when you watch a really great movie and it's like oh and it's wonderful and then you know oh no the crap is gonna happen and they're gonna miss each other and it's gonna get messy you know though underneath that that there's this love that is threaded you know thread through it all and that it's you know is infusing the story right fueling the story and that you're going to come back to that so that's how i feel about my journey um in being very drawn to spiritual work when i was uh well five years old i would say that was a transcendent experience and then at 17 uh found the sufis or they found me don't know which <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know it was that singing and dancing and celebrating life you know and connecting in that way 
and going forward, you know, and, and studying, becoming a, a, an excellent musician, like a really the precision and then being able to, it's like with communication, I want to be able to say what I mean, right? And mean what I say. So having that language of music to, to really hone in, hone my craft and become skilled at that so that when I sing and when I, the I am is here, the, the Pollyanna person gets out of the way, this channel is ready to go. So in terms of the spontaneity, you know, I've prepared, <laughs> I have prepared the vessel, right? So that I've prepared it from the spiritual side in terms of the deep work. And then I've prepared it in terms of the mechanics of how does the voice actually work? And there's really a truth to that, you know? So combining those two things so that I trust my voice, I trust this instrument and I trust who I am that even if I don't know what I'm gonna say or what I'm gonna sing, that the, the come from is how can I be a service? Mm -hmm. okay. How can I be a source for transformation? And that's my true, true wish. You know, when I'm out of my way and out of the, oh, what am I gonna get? It's more, what can I give, right? Beautiful. Yeah. You know, I was reminded of something a little earlier when you talked just now that I had thought about in ages. There was an axiom back in the early days of movies. There was an axiom that every movie was basically boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl. That was yeah. basically what every movie was. Yeah. But as we were talking, I was thinking about our tribe and taking that axiom and isn't it child knows God, adult loses God, we refind God, you know, that isn't that kind of like the journey of our life, right? When we're little, we are connected and we're in that awe, as you said, and the oneness. And then we get into our ego and our identification and our trip and all that stuff. And then at a certain point, we come back to really finding our true connection to the divine. And, and I think that I, I, you just described that so beautifully as you gave us a very quick Reader's Digest condensed version of Pollyanna's life. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That is you know, the, the love story. The other, and it is, it's, it's the ultimate love story. I mean, as Rumi called it, the eternal beloved, right? Yeah. You know, really learning to connect to the eternal beloved. Um, again, you know, when I was in my 20s and 30s, it was all about everybody was trying to find their soulmate. And now everybody's wanting to find their tribe. Right? <laughs> you know, it's like if, if there's a if there's a if there's a romantic partner, great, but it's really about finding the tribe and finding again the connection to the eternal beloved. Yes, absolutely. And I, I want my soulmate too. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You're allowed. All right, all right, all right. For that, I'm going to get out the magic wand. You're <laughs> granted, Pollyanna. You got it. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Wizard, uh, Wizard Scott. <laughs> Wizard Scott. I, I even got the hat, which is here. I give you the full thing. I've got all my little props, you know, that I keep. So uh, I've yeah. Got the, I've got the wizard hat and I've got the magic wand. So I can, I, I, I can play the role. I can go there. Yeah, I believe it. You got the, you got the hair. Got the hair. I got the oh. thing. The beard. The definitely. Yeah. You, you know, one one other thing I want to say, and I turn back over to you for a second to ask you to riff on it. Probably about twenty five years ago, I started using the mantra of "I'm a clear channel for spirit to flow through," and I've absolutely said those words inside in a meditative way thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And it's become a touchstone for me. Um, and I'm thinking you use the word touchstone a lot in one of my favorite Pollyanna songs. <laughs> and um, there are times when I'm coaching and I had a really crunchy place with the individual or the couple or the family I'm working with. <clears throat> and I don't know where to go. Like, yeah. I don't know what to do because it's so crunchy. 
And I'll close my eyes and I'll do that mantra. I'm a clear channel for spirit to flow through. And every time my mouth will open and words will come out and they are not coming from my logical mind. And it's where we needed to go or what needed to be said next. Yeah. And so with that, it's kind of what I've learned. And I have a huge ego that I always have to put aside to allow that to come through. Yeah. I'm going to put the spotlight back on you and ask you to share a little bit more about your relationship to spirit flowing through you, especially as both a writer and as an instrument of God with your voice. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Ah. Hmm. Well, I'm remembering uh, what's coming to me right now. And I, I, I don't know if you've heard of the Diamond Heart um, work. The Diamond Heart, it's a, it's a yeah. that I was. Oh, you, you've talked about it. And I, yeah, and, I had and heard I, about it a little bit prior to you, too. Yeah, that I, that I was part of for, I don't know, 20 plus years. And I was interested in this. Um, I was drawn to this training and this training was drawn to me and I wanted to, I wanted to resist it. My ego recognized like, uh Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> You're not getting rid of me that quickly or, you know, challenging me. And it kept the, so the, the, this um, path was calling me and, and trying to find ways it would show up in a book or a friend would say, and then I somehow happened to end up with a therapist um, thinking that I was going there for marriage counseling and then my marriage broke up. And then I thought, well, I'll stay on and, and do some therapy. Turned out she was a diamond heart teacher also. And I said, well, at some point I wanna do some spiritual work with you. And so we did a lot of therapy and, and I've got to myself to a more balanced place and kind of over the, the grief and the trauma of losing my marriage. And I said, okay, I'm ready for a, a spiritual practice. And um, I had received spiritual practices earlier on with Sufi practices and so forth. And the thing that she said, okay, sense your arms and legs. And, and I was like ready for the, the punchline, right? <laughs> she said, sense your arms and legs. I said, and, and I expected her to give me a mantra or something like that, right? She said, sense your arms and legs 24-7 like every, even when you're sleeping, sense your present sensations right now in the moment. And I thought, well, that's, that's not, you know, what sense your arms and legs, that's not much of a practice, right? So I started to, to practice it. And what I noticed was my breath. What I noticed was the moment. What I started to notice was the, the beauty and the preciousness of what's here right now. So I would say the landing in the moment is it, right? Because that's all we have. This is now. So the training, the presence, like you, you had a, a mantra to, um, you know, may I be in it? What is it to be an instrument of spirit? Or may spirit move through me? Give it I'm to me. Again. I am a clear channel for spirit to flow through. Yeah. I'm a clear channel for spirit to move through. For me, I needed to learn how to get just in the present moment because I was doing so much with my mind. So for right then, my mental thing wasn't, wasn't really helpful. It is now, and I use it in, in a very powerful way. For me, and I think everybody is, is different in terms of how they find their path. For me, I need to get present in my body right and in my breath so as a child with all the traumatic things that happened i used my mind my mental thinking to try to get out of being here so being here in this physical presence was a very powerful thing and it still is you know it's still that presence and then my mind just goes quiet actually it's it feels just this blank beautiful, pristine, pure black space, right? Luminous, the luminous night of, of the void of the infinite, right? That's just 
open. And I don't know, it's like that thing that you're saying, like, I don't know what I'm having in this crunchy place. And then when you get present, the words come, you don't even know where they came from. They just show up miraculously, right? It's like that for me. It's yeah. go be present, be in the nothing, be in the complete 100% <clears throat> unknown. And that that's the place that I create from. And miracles happen. Mm -hmm. Things come out of my mouth. I'm like, when I'm teaching, like, it's kind of like, wait, who said that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> it, it really is remarkable how that can happen. Um, yeah. I was, and what I'm about to describe has happened in my life about three or four times, but I, I don't promote it because it just spontaneously happens. But I've actually had other spirits come into my body. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a time, the last time this happened was by now, this is probably two years ago. I was doing a session with a woman in New York who was very kind of a, definitely not new age. Um, she was more of a New York businesswoman and I was working with her because um, she was having boyfriend problems. And she happened to mention that she really had a tremendous amount of guilt that mm -hmm. her father died. She was in New York, her father lived in San Francisco. She's Chinese and her father died and she wasn't with her father when she died, when he died. And then she had tremendous guilt about it. Yeah. And I could feel it. I didn't know where to go. So I did that thing. I slowed down. I did the, you know, the clear channel for spirit to flow through. And the next thing I know, the spirit of her father comes into my body. Oh, wow. After, and said things that I, I would never have known. And she's like crying because this experience is happening. And, and, I'm, and there's like the part of me that's kind of the observer watching what's going on with my body, right? I wasn't out of my body um, looking down. It wasn't like that. But, but in, my, in my beingness, there was that part of me going, wow, this is really interesting. While my body was being used as a vehicle for this tran transmission, this communication that wanted to happen, you know? So it is remarkable how we can be vehicles for spiritual flow through. Um, one of our speakers last night shows, you know, is all about angels. And uh, actually two of our speakers mentioned that, that angels work through people, you know? And that when we're open, an angelic realm and an angelic spirit can come into a human body to provide the service that Pollyanna needs, that Scott needs, that this person is longing for or needing in the moment. So it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah, exactly. And, and the, you know, you had asked about in terms of when I'm writing, when I'm writing songs, um, I started to do my diamond heart work and then doing inquiry, I would write songs about things that I was curious about in myself. They were like little, uh, like homeopathic <laughs> remedies that worked on my being. And then I knew they were questions that that other people would be, um, you know, diving into because we are, you know, we're, we're human. We are, we have these questions about ourselves, and we, we have, oh, similar things to discover in terms of who am I, what makes me tick, what makes me amazing, what's in my way, all those kinds of things. And so I started to write songs as a way to heal and become whole, and also as a way to reach out to others. And the more and more I did that, the more I became aware of this energy of, it was, you know, the spirit, the feeling of spirit, the experience of spirit, that even when I'm here singing and playing by myself, that this spirit is carrying those messages of love, those questions, those um, answers, you know, um, out into the universe. And I just, I, I just get this feeling that I am connected with everything when that's happening. And, and my prayer is going out and, and it's always the wish that I can be of service. And that's where that started. It started with my own inquiry into myself, 
to heal and whole and wake up. And then it naturally, you know, when we start to connect with who we really are, that generosity of spirit, our heart opens and we want to be of service. It's just a natural outpouring, right? Um, not something that we have to try to do. I, and yeah, I just wanted to answer because I didn't hadn't answered that part of your question in terms of the songwriting and the things like being a touchstone, like that prayer of being, may I be a touchstone, you know, that something about my presence here, my life, that it, that it matters, you know, and that, and that I make a difference. That's and so we all have that. We all have that. <laughs> you know, it's true. It's true. You know, when, when people are depressed, the best way to get out of depression is be of service to people that are less fortunate than you are. Yeah. It's the absolute cure for depression that's not chemically based. There's chemically based depression and there's circumstantial based right. depression, right? <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> we're, sorry, I've got a cough today. We're in agreement that being a clear channel for spirit to flow through is a very cool thing. <laughs> and it's not limited to people that just have your particular vocal talent and your particular creative talent. And, uh, but it's anybody and that you are helping people. You've got this amazing workshop and, and we're now gonna get into what's really important, which is she's got this amazing workshop she's doing. Deborah Juice, she's gonna take it. It's a training. It's not just a workshop. It's a it's six training. month training. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's <laughs> the training. So rather than me saying much more about it, tell us about the Empowered Singer. Tell us about what's gonna be happening. Well, the Empowered Singer is bringing together my loves, as you can tell, I love singing. I love using my voice in a powerful way. And I love transformation. And I love being of service and dedicating my art to being a source of transformation, to creating a, a more beautiful, harm, harmonious, you know, just sustainable world. And so why I called it the empowered singers, I, I'm taking my, I, I'm putting my loves of vocal mastery, which is literally, there are the nuts and bolts of how the voice works. And everybody has all the equipment they need. If you're speaking, you can sing, right? It's the same voice. And there are certain principles that the voice um, follows mechanically, just like, you know, you bend your arm this way, not the other way. And as long as you comply with how your body is built to work, it works beautifully. And a lot of people don't realize that they can, they, maybe if they've struggled with out of tune singing or straining their voice, straining for the high notes or, you know, running out of breath, things like that. There's literally such an easy step-by-step -step way to re resolve those things. So that then, this channel gets to open up and you get to use it however you were born, what you were born to bring into the world and how to use your voice. So the Empowered Singer is combining vocal mastery with and infusing it with meaning. So, you know, how do you wanna connect? What is the meaning that you wanna bring? When you speak, who do you be? It's the, it's the I am, right? So vocal, vocal mastery truly is, I am and I speak it or I sing it into presence. And it could be when I'm working, um, you know, with some, like somebody that you're working with who is struggling with depression or when I'm singing to a child or I'm singing at the bedside or I'm up on Broadway and I'm, you know, moving a huge audience of people, whatever that is, you're being able to embody presence and spirit and being as you use your voice. So you get to have the free, completely beautifully working mechanically well, like when our bodies are in harmony, right? We feel good, we feel fluid, you know, we're, uh, we're able to move in the world in a way that feels um, free, right? And easy. And then I get to be who I am, walk as I am, talk as I am. I've seen people 
when they started taking voice lessons, um, maybe there isn't, they don't have the a professional aim. Like they're not trying to go sing on stage. They just open up their voice and then all of a sudden they're changing careers or they, uh, they huh. left a, a relationship that didn't, that wasn't appropriate or not, that's not the right word, but you know, wasn't working and, or found a new relationship or, you know, um, found a different, um, a different uh, vocation. Like, oh, that's really what I'm here to do. Oh, that's my vision. You know, so I, was, I see people get so much clarity about what they're here to do when they are an empowered singer. And that could be singer speaker again, same voice. Yeah. So I've worked with motivational speakers, you know, I've worked with actors, I've worked with people that have gone onto the big stage, people that are again singing at the bedside, or um, you know, there's just so many applications that we're using our voice every day, right? And how consciously are we using our voice? How how often are we really thinking about wow? I want to, I, I need to speak this way, or it, it's, it's not even need. It's just so connected to who you be that it comes out in just the right way. Like you were saying, Scott, like, I don't know what I'm going to say. I just know that who I am, who I truly am is going to come through. And that's what the empowered singer training is really aimed at. My, my prayer is that um, you know, since my, I'm like, I feel like I'm the, you're the wizard. <laughs> I'm the voice midwife, right? I'm, I'm, I'm helping people birth their voices in the world and, and become the, the leaders and the healers that they were born here to be. And like you were saying, like, you know, the, one of the quickest way to get out of depression is to be, is to be of service. Right. And so how do you take what you're doing with your voice, with your speaking every day, whoever it is you're speaking with, whoever you're singing to, if it's a child, you know, what, that, that it makes, that it's infused with your love and with, your, with the meaning, right? With your heart. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, the, there's so much wisdom you're sharing. But something that just really stood out for me is when you were talking about how when people really access their voice their life changes not yeah. just as a as a singer yeah. and again i think it's because when when people are working with you and they are empowered when we are empowered we're back in alignment we're back in alignment with spirit we're back in the flow and when we're in the flow a bad relationship or a, a job that's no longer serving us goes away and yeah. the new relationship or the new job comes in because we're back in the flow. And so that to be empowered, I'm gonna make a political statement, does not look like Donald Trump. To be <laughs> empowered, right? Because that's not real empowerment, that's ego. Sorry for anybody who's a Trump lover, um, but it's just a, a, an example that's just too obvious to, to, to use. True yeah. empowerment, is the Dalai Lama. True empowerment is our spiritual teachers, you know, who are in alignment and are in service to the world, are in gratitude and alignment with life. And so that is real empowerment. And, um, and so the empowered singer, you're using the voice as the, as the focal point not just the vocal point, but the focal point. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really about empowerment. And so thank you. I mean, that, that really, I, I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> You're signing up for the training. <laughs> you, you, Scott, you use your voice every day, you know, yeah. In, yeah. and I experience you as empowered. Thank and I, I love that you really highlighted that word because that is the point. It's empowering you to go forth and be who you really are that's when we are and i love the like yes being in the flow and when 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 we are in the flow i mean not that bumps don't happen they do of course you have so much of that you know that that coming back to the center that's operating that get, getting toggled off it's like oh you know we we find that center place right 
That's what that's what an airline. I there's a great analogy for what you just described, and that's airplane flying. We get on an airplane in Los Angeles, and we experience it takes off, and five hours later we land in Hawaii or we land in New York or wherever it is we're going. And in our world, it's easy. We started one place, we got to where we were supposed to. But do you know that that airplane was off course 98% of the time? Uh, no, I didn't know that. 98% of the time it's off course. The pilot's job, bring it back to course, bring it back on course, bring it back on course. Now we just experienced perfect takeoff, perfect landing, but that pilot is constantly taking the plane and bring it back on course because the winds come in and the you know the different factors come in and you have to keep bringing it back on course and so it's not like we just flick a switch and <laughs> we're now permanently tuned into god consciousness okay i'm awake and that's it everything's going to go great <laughs> and if anybody tells you that run run as fast as you can <laughs> in the opposite direction yeah is bullshit. Um, we constantly have to come back to course right i have to come back on Come back, come back. All right. So I want to um, briefly go into where people can learn more about the Empowered Singer. And there it is. There's, um, if people go to pollyannabush.com forward slash empowered dash singer, that's the page we're on right now. Open your voice, transform your life. There it is. That's what we were just talking about. And this is starting very soon, it's starting February 8th. So we've got. Oh, about three weeks, yeah? Yeah. And wow. Now, how many people are going to be in the course? How does that work? Well, okay, so the structure, I'm thinking around 10 um, would be a good number. Um, and so very I would say very... jump on, jump on, jump on, because it's yeah. going to fill up. It's filling up. <laughs> Ten's not very often. Yeah, I mean, that'll fill up for it, sure. It, it might. I mean, I already have a bunch of people enrolled and, and people are already um, like on, on, on the edge. I'm like, yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to cross the line. Um, so definitely jump on. If you are feeling drawn to this, jump on now. Okay. Uh, it'll be a combination of group uh, classes, um, individual coaching with me, additional trainings. So they're a weekly group class weekly uh, private training, you will have an accountability practice buddy, right? So you get to create goals and you'll have every two months an in-group share. It could be uh, a song that you wrote, a, a, a verse of a song that you wanna write, sing, like maybe you wanna sing like Aretha Franklin and you're gonna go for that. Everybody's stretch is, is gonna look different. Right. Okay. So it might be, I'm gonna write my own mantra or I'm gonna share it, I'm gonna teach it. So every two months, an in-group uh, stretch, share. Uh, there will be a private Facebook group for people to interact and share with each other, homework assignments, um, and then additional trainings. I do have some guest teachers that are coming in. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a, an extra confidence building training, some extra songwriting training, additional. And then there's this wonderful man from Denmark that I studied with when I studied at the Complete Vocal Institute. He's a master singer and also an incredible actor. And he teaches this amazing process for song interpretation or presencing when you're speaking. So it could be either way, you know, if, if your aim is to be a motivational speaker and you want to know how to, you know, move and groove and, and who you be when you connect with your um, listeners, right? Um, or however you want to use your voice in speaking or if it's about a song and, you know, things like that. So in sound healing, I have a sound healing teacher coming in and beautiful Dave Worm, a voice astro, who's been traveling with, he's an amazing uh, circle song facilitator. He's gonna come in and teach some stuff about creating and facilitating. So we have a lot of stuff in store. Um, it, yeah, it's gonna be a deep dive and with uh, group training and private training and, personal coaching and collaborating with your buds uh, and a Sounds big, a big present, a big um, uh, presentation at the end where you can invite friends and family and share your big work that you did. And how long is the entire course? How, what's the like, Six months? Yeah. Six months. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And what a, what a wonderful six month transformation and a good time. 
because let's face it, we're in a pandemic. So, you know, a lot of our things to do outside are not happening and won't be happening for a while. Um, so this is a perfect time to really change your life by changing your voice. You know, and I saw that and it's really true. Um, yes. you know, it's, it's beautiful. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to, tell me about this five day challenge. Um, what's okay. that all about? Yeah, so um, starting tomorrow, actually, um, it's called the From Shower Singer to Empowered Singer. You know how some people say, I only sing in the shower. Okay, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> so come on out of the shower. So yeah, five day challenge on 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. every morning Oh, this week, Monday through Friday. And um, I will give uh, some coaching on a, a certain principle about singing, singing technique, and then um, hot seat a few people, and then you'll have homework to go and practice, and they get to share on the Facebook group. Um, it's a private Facebook group where you can share your takeaways and your insights. And if you're feeling really brave, you can sing something on there. Um, so that's the, a free training. So people can get a feel for working with me. And then, yeah, that's, the five day challenge. Great. Okay. Now and there's, but, but wait, there's more. There's more. There's, there's more. There's also the 90 minute empowered singer. So I'm going to that page. Tell me about this. Well, be, some people might not be able to make it to the five day challenge. And by the way, about the five day challenge, each day will be, each day will be recorded and then put on the Facebook group. So if you missed part of it or missed it, you can go and review it. The empowered, the live workshop, 90 minute workshop is a one off. Okay. Um, there's one that's coming Tuesday, 6 to 7.30 PST. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's one training where I'm okay. covering uh, a bunch of stuff about singing and getting people informed about their instrument and helping opening, opening it up. And then another same, a same thing a week later on a Tuesday evening, six to seven thirty. Okay. Now it seems like if I'm like all these wonderful options, probably the best option might be to go to your Calendly and uh, you're offering a uh, free consultation. Yeah, exactly. So people can jump on to a discovery call with me and we'll talk about where are you today with your singing or in speaking and using your voice, where you'd like to be, you know, and what's in the gap, right? Mm -hmm. And then look at solutions and ways that we can have you realize your vision for your voice, for using your voice in the world. Wow. For yourself, yeah. <sighs> Thank you for all the amazing services that you're offering, you know, and I really want to encourage people. I know most people watching this show watch the video replay. So um, if this is all too much, for you, if they go to pollyannabush.com, that's where they'll be able to scroll and find what they need to do, yeah? Is your Calendly link available at pollyannabush.com? That, that would make sense for it to be there that now. Be the place <laughs> to be. That's a good, <laughs> hello, you know, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning the business side, you know, getting getting if better at that. Help inserting that. Let me know because I'll hook you up with um, I guess somebody who did that. Okay. For me. Yes, I would like some help with that. And also, meanwhile, just email me at okay. info at pollyannabush .com. Okay, And right. we can go. We can totally just we we can go that route and set up an appointment um, from there. And it, and if you want to jump onto one of the free trainings, I will send you the links and the information there. Um, just so email me and we'll be, in, we'll, we'll make it happen. Okay. Info at pollyannabush.com, P-O-L-L-Y-A-N-N-A-B-U-S-H.com. Yeah, yeah. Pollyanna, thank you so much for, what a beautiful way to start my Sunday. Um, it's gonna be a full day, I'm hosting a three hour Fantuzzi online rainbow concert this afternoon. Oh, beautiful. And I've oh. got two meetings in between then and now, but 
this is a beautiful way to start the day. And I just really, I so admire you. I really do. Thank you so much. Um, you know, you have just a, you're a great spirit, a great spirit, beautiful woman, beautiful inside and out. And thank you for sharing your, your medicine, your wisdom, your voice, uh, and your understanding of how to be empowered and how to empower others. It's a real gift to our world. My pleasure. Would you like to hear a little song before you guys? I would love that. Is that possible? Um, gee, I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> I, I didn't know she was going to do this, and I, I was kind of hoping. Okay, I'm going to full focus on her. So you mentioned the song Touchstone, so I'm just going to I'm going to play that. And I love this song. It's so much about being of service, right? Thank you. 
Oh, oh, oh my God, thank you so much. Thank you. You know, touchstone is a word that before I met you, I frequently used because of the nature of my coaching work. But now whenever I use that word, I hear your beautiful voice singing it, you know, because I've heard and because you sing it so often in the song, it's embedded in my brain. Mm -hmm. And uh, just beautiful. God bless you. Thank you, Pollyanna. Thank you for having me here, Scott. This has oh. been such a treat and a pleasure and a joy. And ah, I, I, I kind of got so I got so enraptured in you. I feel a little bad because we do have people in the Zoom room that I didn't really acknowledge very much. So hello, Anna and Sharon and T and user and and one of the people in the chat room wrote, Pollyanna, you're great. I am a total private singer. So for you, she'll help you to go from singing in the shower uh, beyond. So thank you to- Shower and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Right, there's bed, bath and beyond. Uh, I <laughs> take you be beyond the shower, go beyond the shower. A whole new meaning now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so thank you to those of you in the Zoom room that were with us. And I apologize for not giving you more attention. I kind of got enraptured by Pollyanna. And thank you to everybody out in Facebook land. Um, again, you know, feel free uh, for those of you watching on Facebook and also on uh, our YouTube channels that are watching, uh, go ahead and still put in comments, even if you're watching the replay, because most of you will be watching the replay and we'll go back and we'll take a look and, and try to respond. So, you know, thank you for that. Pollyanna, I look forward to our next connection. It's so wonderful. It's always such a pleasure and a treat to be with you, Scott. Thank you. Yeah. Much and love. thank you, everybody else. At everybody out there, thank you so much for joining. And know that your voice matters. And we need it. We need it. We need to all step up. Step up our game and come out of hiding. Because yeah. when now you, is hide, the time. you know, it really is. And when you hide your light, Somebody who needs to have your particular message, your way of giving it, you're holding back for that person. So remember, when you're holding back your light, there's somebody that you're here to serve that's not getting your, your gift. And you're never ready, by the way. And no, oh, oh, and you're I'm never ready. ready. You yeah. know, I, I train coaches and they're all waiting to be ready. You're never ready. For, that, for those of you that had children, were you ready to have a child? Right. Think oh, about God. anything you've done in your life. You're never ready. You just do it. Right. Yeah, exactly. I'm every single day. I meet the day not ready. Just like, <laughs> just get me out of my way, Lord, <laughs> because I ain't ready. <laughs> uh, I love yeah. you. Okay. All right. Have a beautiful sacred Sunday, everybody. God's blessings. See you soon. <laughs>